Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. We're excited and pleased to welcome a uh, long-term friend back to our podium here to bring us up to date on what's going on in the world of skin and things that go wrong with the skin. But Dory Gilbert has been at Hogue for over 30 years, 36, 30 something in there. Uh, and there are a lot of faces here tonight that remember when he was in training and when he uh, came to take care of our patients with us. He went to medical school, USC, uh, internship also there, and then was a resident at uh, the same time I was at uh, Harvard UCLA Medical Center, then called uh, Harvard General Hospital for several years before he came down here to practice. His topic for us today, uh, you can read from the evaluation forms sitting in front of you, uh, but we who have fair skin, the descent of Eastern uh, Europeans, end up boiling our heads uh, again and again with all the suns that we don't take, sunscreen we don't take care of. <clears throat> and so we, we have to face our follies, um, and he's going to tell us on how this can be even improved. There's no disclosure that is necessary. You think you know a guy, and then you look at his biographical sketch and say, well, there's more to this man than dermatology. Uh, Dory and his wife, uh, Gloria, have been married for 39 years. Got it right? <clears throat> and raised five children in their home in Laguna Hills, where he's very active in the community. Uh, he was on the, elected to the Saddleback Valley United School District Board of Education. Uh, where he served for 29 years. He was a coach in all sorts of uh, games that kids will play. And then in 2010, uh, Dr. Gilbert followed a childhood dream, and that is to join the Army. So he made his family sure his family was safe, and his practice was going to still be there when he came back. And he volunteered at age 60 to be a physician for the United States Army uh, Medical Corps. He went to train, basic training in Texas and volunteered for deployment uh, to Afghanistan. Uh, and those of us who saw the transition from sort of little chubby, overweight to slim, trim, uh, highly athletic individual who tried to maintain that same level. He was a brigade surgeon for the 26th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade of the, Nation, of the Massachusetts National Guard. He was responsible for the health care of over 200, excuse me, 10,000 soldiers in the Kabul-based cl cluster. He received a lot of awards, uh, and he's now back to us in, with it, being in the Army Reserve. He's been very involved with the education of physicians and patients about the problem of, of uh, skin problems associated with uh, exposure to ultraviolet light uh, but he keeps active, active with the community. Uh, he just finished his term as mayor uh, of uh, Laguna Hills, California. Uh, I heard it's not true. His wife doesn't have to. Absolutely. Uh, please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Dory Gilbert. Thank you so much. That was really nice of you. Well, thank you, Paul. I think my mother must have written that introduction for you. <laughs> anyway, can you hear me out there? No? Use the mic. All right, I'll, I'll use the mic. How's that? Is that better? OK. Well, it, it's uh, quite an honor to be here. Um, I need to um, get out of this. Um, let's see here. Here we go. I have to do this on my, by myself here. There we go. I did it. OK. And let me just see if this, will this work here? Yep. OK. So uh, anyway, um, th these are my conflicts of interest, but they don't really apply to anything that we're talking about today. Um, so uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is, it's a procedure called photodynamic therapy. And this is something that, that really started earnestly back in about 2004. Uh, I was part of a national uh, group of physicians that uh, did some studies and, and published a paper on this treatment. And 
it, it's a different approach to the treatment of, of pre-cancers, basically. But we can treat uh, superficial skin cancers like you know, superficial basal cells and squames. But the reality is there are better treatments for that with Mohs surgery or you know, ED and C or whatever you're used to doing. But we do have um, now a new way of doing it and you know, new over the last 10 years, but that, that's relatively new in, in, in medicine. And it, it's a procedure that we have embraced in, in our practice. Um, it's a treatment that I actually have done to myself about every 12 to 18 months um, because I do have a history of basal cell carcinoma. And um, this is a treatment that I think would apply to most of you out here more in terms of you being the patient rather than for your patients because you know certainly demo the demographics for this, this kind of a treatment usually starts from age 40 on up um, when people start developing lots of, of precancers. So the, the question is what is, if, if we're going to do this kind of a treatment, we need to put something on the skin that's going to be absorbed by rapidly dividing skin cells, so precancer skin cancers. So what is that substance going to be? I mean, we need something that's, what is the ideal photosensitizing agent for the skin? So it, it has to be rapidly um, uh, absorbed by the, by the tissue. Uh, there has to be a short time interval between putting the medication on patients and then treating them. Uh, it has to be activated by wavelengths that are easily used in a practice. So we can use wavelengths from the blue light around 415 nanometers all the way up to red light, which is around 630 to 40 nanometers of light. And these are all visible wavelengths of light. And there, some of them are very inexpensive. So you know, if you wanted to do this in your practice, you can. Um, you need an, a sensitizer that's going to give you a high yield of singlet oxygen cells, because it's the singlet oxygen cells that are going to destroy your target. And you need something that's going to be cleared very rapidly from the skin cells so this process doesn't keep going day after day after day. You want to hit it, get it done, and then move on with your life. So aminolevulinic acid, also known as Levulan, is the only really FDA-approved uh, medication to, to do this. So this is theoretically our ideal photosensitizer at this time. Uh, it's a very small molecule, so it enters the cells rapidly. It's a short incubation time. You can incubate this medicine on the skin for 15 minutes or you can incubate it for 16 hours. 16 hours was the FDA approved way of doing it, but nobody does it that way. It's, it's just not practical. So I would say that 90% of the patients that um, use this treatment, they come into the office, we put the medicine on their face, we let them sit there for an hour, and then we treat them. Um, and it's also um, very easily activated by the lights that we have in our office. Now I have, a, you know, I have a very busy laser practice, so I have all different wavelengths of light in my practice. So for us, it's, it's really easy to do. But let's say you didn't have any lasers at all. Well, you could just buy a blue light and they're very inexpensive and you can do these treatments. Um, it's, it's, it only photosensitizes for about 24, maybe 36 hours. Um, but then it's out of your system, and so you don't have to worry about continually going through this process you know, every day. And you need something that's not going to be toxic in the dark. So this is amino levulinic acid, and, and um, what happens is that when you, um, the ALA is taken up by the cells, it's converted to protoporphyrin 9, and most of us know that you know, protoporphyrin 9 is a very sensitizing agent to the skin. And once this medicine has been absorbed into the cells, then we, um, we activate it with light. And in our practice, we use intense pulse light and blue light. We do both. The reason why, and I'll show you in a few minutes why, is because the longer the wavelength, the deeper the penetration of the, the light into the skin. So, with blue light, that's the maximum absorption spectrum for ALA. 
but if you use red light, you actually go deeper and you can pick up more of the um, atypical cells that way. So what we'll do is we'll make one pass over the patient's face with our intense pulse light, which is wavelengths of 560 out to 640, and then we'll, we'll go over the skin with the blue light. That way we get the best of both worlds. So when you, oxygen is absolutely a requirement for this. If you just put ALA on somebody, well, aminolevulinic acid is part of your heme synthesis pathway. So, it, you know, it's in your system right now. But if you expose ALA to light and oxygen at the same time, that's when you get the reaction, right? You need, you need all three of those, the ALA, light, and oxygen. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And then what happens when you have the ALA, the oxygen, and the light, you get those singlet oxygen cells. And those are the cells that are really toxic to the rapidly dividing skin cells on your skin. And you get these hydroxyl groups and superoxides and perioxides, and they kill those precancerous cells. So the, the question is, you know, how, do, how does this apply to a medical office, whether it's a general practitioner or a dermatologist or, you know, whatever you do, how, how, how does this work for you? And I think that the best application for this treatment is for actinic keratosis, precancers. And for, you know, most of us who live in Southern California, it's a problem. And I mean, I know it's been a problem for me uh, and for most people that have fair skin. That's one of the reasons why I located in Newport Beach in 1979, because I knew that people here had a lot of disposable income and time, and they'd be outside playing golf and in, on their boats and you know, just being outdoors all the time. And thank God for the Irish, because they're so fair-skinned that I knew I would have a practice filled, just filled with, filled with them. Um, and, and that's the truth. I mean, if you look around in your practice, you, you see fair-skinned people like myself with, with lots of uh, skin issues. So we use this to treat moderate to severe actinic keratosis. Now, if somebody just comes to my office and has three or four AKs, I'm just going to freeze them off. I mean, that's what we all do, right? We just freeze them off and say, I'll see you back in six months or a year, or, or you know, the door's always open if something comes up, come in. But for the patient who has multiple AKs, where you know, 14, 15, 16, and they're coming in you know, every six months with lots of them, you may want to consider doing something like this. Now, there are alternate treatments. There's Effudex or Floriplex, right? But that's a four-week treatment. You know, patients are putting the cream on their face for four weeks. I mean, you look like the rear end of a baboon. It, it's really difficult. It's difficult to have any kind of social life when you're going through the Floriplex treatment. And that's all we used to have prior to 2005. And that's what we did with people. But it, it's a difficult treatment to do. So that's why I think this is such a nice way to go. Um, something, I, I wrote a paper back in 2005 and published it in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology. And when we were putting the ALA on people, we found that we had about a 15 to 20 percent failure rate. Not, nothing much happened. So I decided, well, let's, let's try to get those epidermal cells moving a little bit faster and maybe we'll have a, a better success rate. So I started experimenting with pre-treating patients with uh, 5-FU, you know, Floriplex or Effudex, and we treated them for four or five days prior to their treatment, and voila, our, our success rate went from the 70% to the mid-90s. And so it was, it was a real leap uh, in, in um, the successful treatment. So now th it's commonplace throughout the country now where physicians will use um, Floriplex or Effudex for five to six days now prior to the treatment. Um, and we just get a much better result. Uh, this, is a good this is a good treatment to do pre or post Mohs surgery. If so if you have a patient who has a history of basal cells and they're going through Mohs surgery, this might be a good way to maybe try to preempt some of those from occurring. And it's also being used for the treatment of acne. Now, yes, it works, but good luck trying to treat kids 
with this treatment because they'd have to come in three or four times and like I said, you look really bad for a week after each treatment. So it's difficult to get anybody in just for the treatment of acne, especially children, you know, 16, 17 years old that are in high school and, you know, they don't want to look like that. But if there's nothing else, if they, they can't take antibiotics, they, they can't uh, take Accutane, then there is something for them. So it's, it's just one of those things that we keep in our back pocket and, you know, if we need it, we have it. Um, so we're talking about singlet oxygen, and um, so this, this is, like I said, this is very important. This is what destroys the membrane transport enzyme, which increases tissue permeability. Very little enters the nucleus, so we're not changing, you know, the DNA of patients. And uh, so that's very important. These are the light sources that I mentioned to you. So um, you can see with this first one, that's blue light. So you can see with blue light, which is about 415 nanometers, that that is the maximum absorption spectrum for this drug. So when you put, put blue light on, on a patient that has ALA on their face, they're going to absorb all of that light in, you know, and, and it's going to react with the ALA. The problem is that blue light is only 450 nanometers, so it's not going to penetrate very deep into the skin surface. So that's why, again, back in about 2004 or 5, I started using intense pulse light because I thought, okay, if I have longer wavelengths, they're going to penetrate deeper. Now, the spectrum is not as, the absorption spectrum is not as good with green light, as you can see here, or with intense pulse light, you can see, again, well, let me use my, my 532 wavelength light here, and you can see here that the absorption spectrum is not very high, but you're still absorbing some light, okay, but you're getting deeper penetration. So, the combination of, of both of these, and now everybody, not everybody, most people that have these lights will now use them when they treat people. So this was another big leap in photodynamic therapy. And so I'm proud to have done these things and, and advanced my field, but it, it's just, not everybody can do it. So, but everybody can do at least blue light. And you can see with, with, with intense pulse light, you have a, a large spectrum for all the way from 560 nanometers all the way out to about 640. Actually, it goes all the way out to near infrared, but near infrared doesn't react with ALA, so we don't care about that. And even if you have a pulse dye laser, you can use that. So what are some of the problems with this treatment? Well, certainly one of the biggest drawbacks, it was the original um, uh, FDA study where patients were having to incubate for 14 to 18 hours and then they would come in and you'd treat them with blue light and it was just pretty painful. Patients just didn't want to do that. They didn't want to incubate overnight. So we started experimenting with different times and that's, we kind of got down to one hour. That's usually what we do. Now when we treat arms and legs, we're going to incubate for a longer period of time. We're going to incubate for probably three hours for arms and legs. And so, um, so for actinic porokeratosis, uh, which is, you, I'm sure you've all seen it, 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 patients that have just lots and lots of little red blotchy scaly lesions all over their legs usually or arms. And, you know, what do you do with those people? I mean, you can't freeze them. And, and Effidex, you'd go through one tube every you know, three or four applications at $600 a pop, that's a little bit much. So we found that when we um, incubated these people for three to four hours, and then we treated them with the light, that we got some great results on arms and legs. And um, it's not FDA cleared right now, so what, it's off label, and we still do it. But it will be, uh, the FDA is going to um, clear the tr for the treatment of arms and legs within the next year. Um, one of the other um, problems is the, uh, the downtime that's associated with this. So remember we were talking about using Effudex, which was about four weeks of redness and scaling. But now you have um, this treatment where um, you're red and scaly for about a week. So this is obviously me, and <laughs> I didn't look that bad. It's, it's yeah, for some reason it... it the, the photograph, that looks worse than that, but I was pretty damn red, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. And, um, and you can get that red, I mean, I, you know, I've seen it. And um, 
So this is a problem, but again, if you're using FEDEX, you could look like that for weeks. So in this case, you look like this for about four days, and then you just peel like crazy. And then by day seven, I'm done peeling. Now I go to work looking like this. I, you know, you know, if you're a shoe salesman at Nordstrom's, that's going to be tough, okay? But you know, in my practice, you know, people see that I practice what I preach, and they ask me, "What are you doing?" And I explain it to them, and they sign up for it. So you know, it's it for me, it's not a big deal, but for some people, they, they just can't look like this you know, for a week. But I, I just wanted you all to see this because I think it's important to know what you look like. So a lot of these problems have been resolved with the shorter incubation times like I've mentioned. They're, they're, it looks really painful and I can tell you I've done this treatment on myself about six or seven times. And some of the times it was like, wow, that was a piece of cake. That was you know, no big deal. And there have been other times where I've gone, wow, this really hurts. You know, I'm putting ice on my face at night because that's usually when it bothers you the most. But it, it can vary, and I don't know why that is. It may be the absorption into the skin. You, know, you might absorb more one time than another. It, it's, it's hard to know why, but there, it, can, it can vary. So I always tell patients, I show them my photograph so they see it, because I don't want anybody to be surprised. And, um, and then I tell them, you know, the pain is variable. And most people tolerate it really well. They really do. Um, every once in a while, it, I'll have a patient, you know, tell me they had to take Advil and, you know, ice all the time. But for the most part, they, they do just fine. So I, I mentioned to you a little bit about acne, but I'm not going to really talk too much about that because I don't think you know, that's really that interesting because we don't do a lot of it. But what we, do, we do a lot of uh, Bowen's disease, which is you know, a very superficial or intraepidermal squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, certainly if somebody has a nodular basal cell or a thick squam, you're not gonna, this is not going to be your treatment. You know, that's going to be surgery. But if it's superficial, it's worth giving it a, a go to see what happens. Um, and sometimes they disappear. Sometimes we use a miquamod along with it. And the miquamod has been really, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it also goes by the name of Zyclera. And it's a topical treatment for uh, superficial skin cancers. It's amazing. I mean, it, it is absolutely amazing um, for superficial skin cancers and it's something to think about in combination with this. Um, some of the cosmetic applications. Um, when I do this treatment, it's almost two months to the day that when my, you know, I hate to be sexist, but when my female patients come in, they're looking at me and they're going, what did you do? And they're, you know, they're looking around my ears to see if I have any scars you know, from like a facelift or something. And, <laughs> Um, it's amazing the cosmetic result that you get from this treatment in terms of getting rid of solar lentigenes and vascular abnormalities. And I mean, certainly we can treat, and we do, I mean, we treat all day long pe people with rosacea and hyperpigmentation with intense pulse light. That's what we do all day long without going through this. And so there's no downtime with if you're just doing photofacial. But, when you add ALA to it, you get a photofacial on steroids. I mean, it really is an amazing um, treatment with great cosmetic results. Uh, it helps with uh, papular pustular rosacea. It helps with sebaceous hyperplasia. Um, it, it, and most of you are aware of the sebaceous hyperplasia are just the flesh-colored papules that we all get as we get older on our face. And they're, sometimes they're a little umbilicated. Well, this medicine gets down into the sebaceous gland, and so when you treat with longer wavelengths, you can get to those glands and shrink them. Now, they don't go away forever, but they certainly do improve, and that's nice. Hyperpigmentation from photo damage peels right off. So it, again, it's, it's really a nice result. And of course, telangiectasias um, around the nose, the cheeks, you know, we're able to knock those out. But we're able to knock those out without doing this, but for the patients who have both, it works out really well for them. Um, in our practice, you know, we combine all, all these things to you know, make people look better, and I'm not going to really get into that. 
but um, so it, it's, it, again, it's just been a, a nice adjunct to my practice. Um, so how do you do this treatment? Uh, for those of you that are interested, patients come in, we scrub their faces very vigorously with acetone. We get all the oil off their skin and anything else they may have there. Uh, and then we, um, like I mentioned earlier, we pre-treat people for about five days with 5-FU. Um, um, and then uh, we apply the medication to the skin and we let it sit for an hour and then we wash it off because when we do the IPL treatment, if we don't, then the gel we put on will just hit the floor. So, you know, you got to wash their skin really well after you've um, applied the uh, ALA. Uh, the treatment with, uh, with IPL, you use your standard uh, settings. You don't have to make any great changes. Uh, we don't use any topical anesthesia with this. The treatment goes very quickly. It's 15 minutes. Um, and you know, you know, we could blow cold air on the skin if, if we have to, but I don't like to because I think that um, inhibits part of the reaction. Uh, if you're going to treat acne, it's going to take two to six treatments. Uh, like I said, for me, it's like I do it once every 12 to 18 months. Some people need two treatments a year, depending on the severity of their um, disease. And um, if you're doing this for photo rejuvenation or photo aging, then you probably need to do more than one treatment. You probably need to do a few, but like I said earlier, we have other ways of doing that without adding the ALA. Uh, Post-treatment, uh, really what it comes down to is the patient needs to have a hat on when they leave the office, otherwise they're going to keep activating the, you know, the, the chemical from the sunlight. And, um, uh, but there are some physicians who say to their patients after their treatment, oh, go play you know, nine holes of golf if you want to, because it just keeps activating. I would find it be very painful, so I just send everybody home with a hat on their head. The first time I ever did this treatment on myself, the next morning I got up and I opened the front door to go outside like three or four steps to pick up the newspaper and it was like someone hit me in the face with a torch. I mean just overnight and the sunlight hitting me in the face was enough to get my attention. So you are very photosensitive for 24 to 36 hours so you just you need to remind your patients of that before you know they go home otherwise they'll be calling you up. You know sunblock is important. Um, while they're recovering at home, we have them just use vinegar soaks like we do when we're doing CO2 laser and lots of aquaphor ointment or hydrocortisone ointment um, just to give them some relief. It really uh, helps a lot. And then also they can be spraying cold water on their face. So there's, there's a lot of things that they can do to minimize the uh, side effects. Um, these are just some photos uh, using the Vizia camera. And what I really want you to look at is, um, and I find it kind of interesting, is if you look at the, um, the middle two, uh, top and bottom, one, the top one is pores, and the bottom one is just evenness of the skin, and if you look at the next slide, you can see the significant improvement between that and that. So we, we do know that there are a lot of good things happening with um, ALA when we do these treatments. Um, these are, I'm just going to show you some before and after photos now because I think it's always nice to actually see, you know, real people and what, what's happening. So this, is just a, this was a patient who just had a lot of brown in her skin and wasn't happy with it, and so we did this treatment. This is a patient with red in her face, and um, my good friend Martin Braun in Vancouver um, sent me this photo, uh, you know, before and after for rosacea. But again, you don't have to... Um, use ALA to do this. You can accomplish this with just intense pulse light. You can accomplish this with just intense pulse light, which is what we do all day long. Um, this is one of my patients and uh, another one. So you can see the, you know, it's a little bit darker on, uh, up, up here than it is here, but I think you'll be able to see. This is a retired um, CHP officer, and if you look at the before and afters here, you can see where the red lesions were on the side of his cheek, the significant improvement that he had there. Uh, this, we you know, did the acetone scrub. We only incubated him for 30 minutes because this is back in 2004 and 5 when we were just ex starting to experiment around with these things. Uh, this is a, another patient with uh, pigmentation in her cheeks and some precancers. 
Uh, this is another uh, patient of mine uh, who went through ALA, and this is a uh, female, and you can see how much smoother her skin looks um, after one treatment. Um, I've actually treated this patient many times over the years um, because she's one of those people who just likes to be out in the sun and is never going to change her habits. And we've done really well with her. Uh, another patient with significant um, skin damage, um, and he, he improved significantly. Here's another one. So you, you can see that for patients who have really significant disease, this is a great treatment because it treats so much at one time. Uh, or you can do Effudex. And, uh, but like I said, that's going to that's gonna be about four weeks of looking like that. So I just thought you'd like to see that. And that's a photograph of my son and I at Camp Leatherneck in the Helmand province in Afghanistan in 2011. Any questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Yes? Right. So did you wait until they got out of the sun and come back before you would treat them or um, The question is, when do you treat people you know, with, with pre-cancers? And I think you can treat people all year long, except in the summertime, if they're outdoors a lot, if you're going to use intense pulse light. If you're just going to use blue light, you can probably get away with it. But we tend to use IPL most of the time. So if someone wants to do the treatment during the summer, I just admonish them to stay out of the sun for several weeks prior to their treatment so that we're not reacting with just tan skin. Because, I mean, as smart as those lasers are, they can't tell the difference between tan skin and damaged skin. It's, it's just pigment. So yeah, we, we try to, we do, we do most of these treatments, believe it or not, um, in December in January, because people have time off. So that's when we do most of them. Yes? How much is the cost? OK, how much is the cost? It, it depends. Um, if you just do the blue light and the ALA, then um, the, your insurance will probably cover it. And um, the, 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 the Kara stick is around $300, the ALA stick. That's, you know, our cost. And then the blue light is, I don't know, $75, $80. It's not a big deal. And, and Medicare covers it. And, but if you add intense pulse light to the treatment, then it goes up by $400. And that's what the, the intense pulse light cost is. And insurance doesn't cover that. That's considered, they, they consider it cosmetics, so, you know, because it wasn't FDA approved. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you once again. I really enjoyed talking to you today.